Hey there, how you doing? All right, what we're going to be focusing on in this video are what you see here on the screen for the title, midpoints and segment bisectors, which are each a way of dividing a segment in half. Two goals is that one, you will use midpoints and segment bisectors in order to find unknown measurements. And the second goal for this video is that you're going to use formulas to find the midpoint of a segment on a number line or on a coordinate plane. All right, so two things. Let's get to the first. And in order to talk about midpoints of segment bisectors and how to use them to find unknown lengths, the first thing I need to do is go over some definitions for you, starting with what is a midpoint. So you should write this definition down if you don't have it already written somewhere. The definition of a midpoint is this. The midpoint of a segment is the point that divides a segment into two congruent segments. All right. A point is a midpoint of a segment if and only if it divides a segment into two congruent segments. It's another way you often hear the definition of a midpoint written, and that version is specifically for when we get into proofs later on in the year. Anyway, a midpoint divides a segment into two congruent segments. So, for instance, if this segment JP has midpoint M. Okay, if that's true, then it divides that segment JP into two congruent segments. Now, specifically, then the two congruent segments will be segments JM and MP. All right, easy enough. A midpoint divides a segment into two congruent segments. One other thing I want to show you here is when you have a diagram and you want to show on the diagram that any distances are congruent or equal in length, I should say, or any two segments are congruent, then what you can do is you can put a little dash mark on the segments that are congruent like that. And that means that here segment JM is congruent to segment MP. All right, so that's what a midpoint is. Let's go ahead and look at the definition of a segment bisector as well. And really, let's just start by breaking down the word bisect, which is the root word of bisector. And the word bisect kind of has two different parts, doesn't it? Bi, of course, you know, is a prefix meaning two. And then sect can mean section. So you could say a bi to bisect means two sections. Now, literally, kind of what we mean for math when we say bisect is to cut in two. And it's implied that they're equal sections. Okay, bisect means cut into two equal sections. So what a segment bisector does is this. A segment bisector is a point, a ray, a line, a line segment, or a plane that intersects the segment at its midpoint. All right, now I've got that same segment that I showed, showed you in the last picture, and I'm going to do a lot of different things to it. Um, a segment bisector has to bisect a segment, and so any one of these types of things that cuts a segment into two congruent things would be a segment bisector. In this case, point M is a segment bisector because a point could be a segment bisector. But a segment bisector doesn't have to be a point. It could be a ray. Okay, as long as that ray goes through the midpoint of that segment, it's a segment bisector. And remember what I showed you a second ago, if you want to show that a point is a midpoint of a segment, you can show that it divides a segment into two congruent segments. So we are, we are saying M is a midpoint here. But you don't have to use a ray. You can use a line for a segment bisector. All right, or you can use a line segment. Or, and this is kind of tougher to draw, but a plane can actually slice a, a segment in half. And so a plane could be a segment bisector as well. But the point being, a segment bisector cuts a segment in half because it intersects the segment at its midpoint. All right, so you got a couple of key definitions down. Let's do a couple of problems using those definitions. And let's begin with this example. The directions here say that point M is the midpoint of segment TD. And it wants us to find DM. Now, remember when you see two points written next to one another and there's no symbol above it, it means the distance from this point to this point. So we're finding the distance from D to M, 
this distance right here. Well, first of all, let's mark what we know. We know that M is the midpoint, and the way that we show it's a midpoint is what I've shown you a couple times now. We're going to put these little dashes, or what, whatever you want to call them. I'll just call them dashes for now because nothing else is coming to mind. We'll put those two little dashes that indicate that the, uh, the two segments TM and MD are going to go into one another. And in fact, the fact that those two segments are congruent to one another is very important to us. This is my logic for how I'm going to find the value of x. And then later on, dm. I know that m is a midpoint, and a midpoint divides a segment into two congruent segments, so I know that segment tm is congruent to segment md. Okay, And then I know that two segments that are congruent to one another are equal in length, so I know the distance from T to M equals the distance from M to D, and I have an expression to represent each one of those distances, and so I can say that 5x minus 8 is equal to 3x plus 2. Now that ought to make sense to you. If these two measurements have to be equal, just make an equation that says they're equal, and that's going to be enough to, in this case, find a value of a variable. Now a little quick algebra, let's subtract 3x from both sides and we'll get 2x here. Let's add 8 to both sides and we'll get 10 on the right until we've got x is equal to 5. And then often you have to go ahead and go a step further and substitute the value of x that you get in order to find the answer that you're asked to find because it didn't say find the value of x. It said find the value of dm. Well now we can say that dm is equal to 3 times 5 plus 2 or 17. All right, you follow? Good. All right, now let's change up the kind of problem we're working with slightly. Here, instead of a midpoint specifically, it just says that a line bisects the segment. And then it wants us to find the distance from F to S, which is this whole thing, if FR, here to here, equals 1.75 centimeters. So just as when we knew that we had a midpoint on the previous problem, we actually know that there's a midpoint on this segment right here. Because remember, a bisector of a segment is, or it can be a line, and in this case it's a line, is going to intersect the segment at its midpoint. Now you've not seen this yet in this course so far, but whenever you have an intersection of two lines or two segments or two rays or any combination of those actually, it's implied that the intersection is a point. And so there's actually a point right there, and that's what R is, is the intersection. All right, now, since that point has to be the midpoint because this, of this being a line bass sister, I'll go ahead and mark that. And then I'll mark the other thing that I know. I know that FR is 1.75 centimeters. Well, I also know that RS is 1.75 centimeters, don't I? Because those were congruent to one another. And so there's a couple ways you can go about finding out the length fs. You can either add these two segments together. You're using the segment addition postulate then. Or you can say you're going to double either one of these. Because if these are each half of the whole segment, then the whole segment is twice those. I'll go that route here. We know that fs would have to be twice the distance from f to r. So it would have to be twice 1.75 centimeters, and thus it would be 3.5 centimeters. All right, so that's just generally how you use midpoints and segment bisectors. Now we're going to go on to using midpoints still, but in a coordinate situation. We're going to look at two different types of coordinate situations. First, we're going to look at a number line and how you would find a midpoint on a number line. And specifically, if you're using coordinates, how do you find the coordinates of the midpoint of a segment on a number line? So, here's how that's going to work. You see a situation here where I have points C and D, and I've just assigned each of them X coordinates, and I just said that this is the first X coordinate and the second X coordinate, X1 and X2. All right. Now, in order to find the midpoint of segment CD, Okay, and we're going to say that M is the midpoint of segment CD, then you would use this expression right here. X1 plus X2 divided by 2. Now I want you to think about something. 
whenever you're trying to find a midpoint, you're trying to find something that's in the middle. And if these coordinates are just real numbers, how do you find the middle, what's in the middle of two real numbers? You average them together. And when you average two things together, you add them up and divide by two. So that's all this little formula is saying, is that to find the coordinates of the midpoint, we're going to average the two coordinates that were given to us, add them up and divide by two. Do you follow? So let's see how that works in an example. Here I've given you a number line, and on that number line I've placed points T and V, and I want us to find the coordinates of the midpoint of segment TV. Now I haven't labeled where it is, but let's pretend there was a segment connecting points T and V. We're going to find the, where its midpoint would be. All right, I went ahead and drew the segment on there. Well, in order to find the coordinates of the midpoint of a segment on a number line, first thing we have to do is pay attention to what are the coordinates for the endpoints. Now, you can tell from the diagram here that T's coordinate is negative 3 and V's coordinate is 2. And so if we we're wanting to call the midpoint M, which is pretty customary, it's not 100% the way you have to do it, but it's pretty customary, all we've got to do is add those two coordinates together and divide by 2. Now that's going to give us negative 1 half right there. So the midpoint would be right here. That's M. Negative 1 half of this coordinate. So very easy. Just average the two coordinates together to find a midpoint on a number line. All right, now what I want you to do is just imagine that you have a segment on a coordinate plane. I happen to have drawn one, but I don't want you to think about the actual coordinates of the points A and B that I plotted. What I want you to assume is that those two points have some generic coordinates, meaning let's just call the coordinates for point A, X1 and Y1, and let's just call the coordinates for point B, X2 and Y2. All right, now you saw that on a number line, all you had to do to find the midpoint of a segment was average the coordinates of the endpoints. And that's really all you've got to do on a coordinate plane as well, except that process happens to come in two steps. Let's say that this is the midpoint. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do is this. I want to think of the x-coordinates of the midpoint and the y-coordinates of the midpoint separately and how I would find those. I'm going to place the x-coordinates of the points A and B on the x-axis really quickly. You would agree that this would have to, this point would have to have the same x-coordinate as this one, wouldn't you? And then if I bring this straight down, this point right here would have to have the same x-coordinate as B, so I can say that that is x2. Now, if I wanted to find the x-coordinate that's in the middle of those two things right here, what I would have to do is what we just saw a second ago. I'd have to average those x-coordinates, right? x1 plus x2 divided by 2. So when I'm finding the coordinates of the midpoint on a coordinate plane, it's gonna, the midpoint is going to have an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, and the way you would calculate the x-coordinate is you would simply average the x-coordinates of the two endpoints of the segment A and B. And now we can do a similar thing with the y-coordinates. Alright, so point A, if I'm transposed it to the y-axis, which is what I'm going to try to do right now, um, this point right here would have the same y-coordinate, so they would both be y1, right? And then this point right here would be our y2. And, well, we just saw that on a horizontal number line, you can average coordinates together to find the middle. Why couldn't you do the same thing on a vertical number line? And, in fact, you can in order to find the midpoint of the, the vertical midpoint, what we would do is average the y coordinates together. y1 plus y2 divided by 2. And so that's the last thing I'm going to write over here. Whenever we're trying to find the y coordinate of the midpoint on a coordinate plane, of a segment on a coordinate plane, what you're going to do is you're going to average the y coordinates of the two endpoints. So average the x-coordinates and average the y-coordinates, that gives you the midpoint of a segment. Let's do one example like that, and then we'll be done. And I've drawn that example here, but forgot to mention this. 
what I just wrote right here where I wrote m, the point m is equal to, and I said how you calculate the x-coordinate of the midpoint and the y-coordinate for the midpoint, that is known as the midpoint formula. You've probably used the midpoint formula in other classes before, along with the distance formula. And I've just explained to you where the midpoint formula comes from. And now I'm about to put it into action. And I'm going to do that to find the midpoint of segment RS. And this time I've given specific coordinates to points R and S. You see point R is at negative 2, 5. Point S is at 4, negative 4. So if I'm saying the point M is going to be the midpoint, then all I'm going to do is this. Simply... I'll average the x-coordinates together first. So I'll take the negative 2 and the 4 and divide by 2. Now, does it really matter which one I call x1 and which one I call x2? It truly doesn't. I'll typically go from left to right, but it could have been either one of these. Addition is commutative, so you get the same sum either way. And then the way you calculate the y-coordinate for the midpoint is, of course, you would average the y-coordinates for the two endpoints. And that would be 5 plus negative 4. And then divided by 2. And then let's get a single number for each coordinate. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So that's the x coordinate for the midpoint. 5 plus negative 4 is 1. 1 divided by 2 is 1 half or 0.5. So if I were to plot the point 1, 1 0 0.5, that would be the midpoint. And you'll be able to see that right here. All right, there's one over half a unit up. This is the midpoint. And I'll label that as M. And we're not going to verify that in any other way other than to say it does look like it's the midpoint, right? We could check distances from M to S and from R to M, but the distance formula is the next video that I'm going to make, so it'd be a little out of place right here. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. You should know how to use midpoints and segment bisectors in order to find unknown measurements. You should know how to find midpoints on a number line and midpoints on a coordinate plane. All right, that's all. See you next time. Bye.